Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Juice Baseball channel. And welcome back to another episode of the Toronto Blue Jays Legends Fantasy Draft Series. And I'm going to be the show 24. We are coming off of a disappointing postseason and really not that interesting of an offseason, if we're being totally honest. We didn't really do anything in the offseason after losing in the ALDS, unfortunately, with 108 wins, which is very, very d disappointing to lose in the ALDS. But that's what happened. We did lose. And really, the only move that we made was making the addition of Brian Wilson. Brian Wilson coming off of a 48-save season last year for the Giants. In uh, 58 innings, he had a sub-2 ERA with a sub-1 whip and a 1.2 war. I mean, Brian Wilson had a fantastic season, made the All-Star team, and he's now going to be our new closer. We transition Mariano Rivera to the setup role because he just kind of... He was doing fine. 32 saves is fine, but he's starting to regress pretty heavily at 38 years old. So we also have Goose Gossage who we could put in there as a setup man if Mariano continues to suffer from his regression. So, I mean, we've got a really, really good bullpen. We've probably got the best bullpen in all of baseball. I'd argue we have the best starting rotation in all of baseball. And I'd argue we have the best lineup in all of baseball. There is not any new changes to the lineup except for there is a new man on the bench. And his name is Julian German. He is the number three overall pick, I think, from a couple of years ago. He is the best player I have ever drafted in any series, off camera or on camera, in MLB The Show history for me. He's the best player ever. I've never had that top of that high of a pick. And if I've ever had that high of a pick, I've never gotten anybody as good on paper as Julian German. And you know this is a historic time for me because especially in a legend series rookies and and players that get drafted in the series never ever make it to the big leagues in a legend series because it's all about the legends that's the whole point of the series it's all about seeing different legends and trying to win championships with those guys but the fact that there is an auto-generated guy that i drafted that we've developed through the minors for a season or two. I can't I think it's been just a season in the minors. The fact that he's already up here and has a real chance of making an impact at 19 years old, that says something about how good this guy is. He could be a generational player. I don't know. He seems like it. And he's definitely a generational player in my heart. He's 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 by far the best player I've ever drafted. And it just sucks that he was drafted in a series like this and not in a series like the Bolts or like the Padres where we could have to actually like really, really use a guy like that. It, he would be more well-received in a series like that other than instead of a series like this. But it just goes to show you how talented and how good I think he can be that he's already up here ready to make his major league debut and he will probably make his major league de major league debut in today's episode because that's the whole point i want him to i want him to play so we're gonna definitely get to see him play now we start season four right season four gm gold yes season four begins today we have already won a world series in the first three years we also made the playoffs and lost in the alds last year so we've had middling success we we've, we've obviously made it to the highest point by winning a world series but we couldn't get back and repeat we're gonna look to try to get it back in two out of three in this season i don't know how that's gonna go hopefully it goes pretty well like i said i think we have the best lineup and the best pitch rotation in all of baseball i think we have the best team in all of baseball i mean we won 108 games last year and all we did was add an even better closing pitcher so i feel like 100 wins is the bare minimum that we should reach I'm thinking maybe 110, 115 wins is probably our level. I guess we'll have to see how we simulate. Uh, who knows if that's actually going to be possible. But we will get started here in the regular season opening day against the A's. What we're going to do here is we are going to uh, play this game, but not play the whole game. We're just going to play um, the quick manage stuff. But the only reason why we're doing it this way is because I want to quick manage it but i also want to see the opening day stuff and when you do, when you quick manage you don't get to see that so johan santana will get the starting spot he'll get the the ball on the mound in game one 
and we are going to see Julian German make his debut today. That's the whole point of this opening day thing. I want to see Julian German get the, the opening day spot. That's why we're going to quick manage, because we're going to play with German. So that is the focus of today's uh, or of opening day. We're going to see Julian German, and then afterwards we're going to simulate some games, jump in here and there, see what happens during the season. Hopefully a lot of success. But right now, game one, it's all about the debut of Julian German. Let's go get it done. partner Chris Singleton I'm John Chambi so the Toronto Blue Jays with major expectations they're among the favorites this season Chris they'd love to build on that postseason appearance from last year do you think it can be a springboard for them I do Boog because this team has already got the building blocks in place and you make the postseason you know you've got a shot at the title so the experience will definitely help them this time around but it's a long season, and they're going to have to do the little things right and stay consistently on top of their game. And that's the best way to take home the commissioner's trophy, in my opinion. First pitch coming your way next. Just about set to go, and on the hill in this one, Bert Blylevin, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the history of baseball. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is opening day here in Oakland. For however much longer Oakland's going to be a thing, <laughs> gotta feel bad for those fans. But hey, I mean, their baseball team wants to move; they're going to move. It's not save the crew, after all. 3-2 count to the leadoff man, Joe Morgan. And we're only playing this because Julian German is... Uh, oh, I thought it was going to be a ball. He's hitting second, so that's why we're playing this. And here comes the rookie. Oh, he's got a weird batting stance. Okay. He obviously hits lefty. Let's see what he's got. First pitch of his career is a fastball up in the zone. Got a decent piece of it, but Derek Jeter right there to grab it so the debut of German not going tremendously that's okay and now we're gonna quick manage uh to get around we do score a run but Johan allows four maybe Johan's not the ace that we thought he was at one point in his career I don't know solo shot from Joe Morgan and German will come back up here he is the debut his first at bat of his career did not go According to plan, but maybe this one can. Taking a pitch. Good eye. Good eye from the rookie. Making his major league debut right down there in the bottom. He's 85 years, 85 years old. 85 overall at just 19 years old, I guess I should say. So he's got a bright, bright future. And he will get on base for the first ever time of his career by taking a walk. Good discipline from the young 19-year-old. You love to see the discipline. Love to see the discipline from the good boys. Now let's see what we can do. Nothing do. I mean, we got to run, but it's nothing too crazy. We'll swing. We'll double play action. We'll swing. Ground out. Okay, Johan, how's he going to do? A double. And now Julian's got a chance. The first time he's ever had a guy in scoring position. Can he get the job done? Can he deliver? Can he show that he's got the clutch gene? That's a check swing strike two. Yes, it is. I was I was in the process of saying strike two because I assumed they were going to call it strike two. It's unfortunate. 2-2 two -two count to German. It could 
be Hermann, but I don't see like an accent over the top, so I'm, I'm I'm just calling him German. I don't know honestly. I think it's Julian German. Oh, that's a nice little rip, and that's gonna be in the right field. I'm sending him home. We're getting the kid his first RBI of his career. Safe. And Julian German has acquired his first ever major league ribby, and his hit. That's right, his first hit. Get out of the way! You're stealing the moment, dude. Is that Jason Giambi? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who it is. Take that ball and put it back in the locker room for him. His first ever hit and his first ever RBI. Now we're just waiting on the home run. Well, I love he, he needs to respect the game. Respect the game of Julian German. That's a nice little rip on the baseball right in the right field. Let me get a little bit of an action replay here. Got a good piece of it. Sent it right between the second base and first baseman. Number 81 is an interesting choice for a jersey number. I don't think I would have went that direction, but Julian German with him getting himself his first ever RBI. And are they going to show me all of it? Because sometimes the you never know how the replays, how long they last. Okay, so it doesn't last too long. It is Jason I, I just kind of guessed it was Jason. It kind of looked vaguely like Jason Giambi, so I kind of just assumed that it was. And it actually is. That's pretty cool. But look at the kid, the 19-year-old. How do I get it? There it is. The 19-year-old kid. He's got a little shifty eye action going on. 19 years old in the major leagues. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more crazy. I mean, are you kidding me? 19 years old and you're in major league baseball? That's out of control, if you ask me. That is out of control. But we got to get a screenshot. I mean, are you kidding me? The kid's in the league. The kid is in the league and he's debuting. Oh, look at that. Look at that. He's all about the team. He's all about the team. All right. Let's quick manage again. Single. He's on second. Oh, bases loaded for Bo Jackson. Two runs have scored. It's five to four. The boys be cooking. Although Johan allows another run. Pitching chains. Yoasker Yanoa. Fielder's choice. And German is up. He's got two outs. He's already got his first career hit and a first career RBI. But he's got a runner on first in a tied ball game here in the top of the sixth. What does Julian German got? Does he have the ice in the veins? We will find out. I really hope that in a bunch of years after German's career has ended, we see that number 81 in the rafters. Well, not in the rafters. We're not in an arena. In hanging up in the ring of honor where wherever we hang our jerseys that's a nice rip from german what kind of wheels does the kid have he's gonna get another rbi and now he's achieved his first career double the kid is on fire look at him how happy he is he's just happy to be producing for his team he got a nice piece of that baseball sent into left center field all the way to the wall he's got a little bit of warning track power we might be seeing uh, a few santa maria's out here for, for Mr. German. That was a nice little rip on the baseball. But a strikeout called by, or called for uh, Bagwell, unfortunately. Pitching change. We're going to bring in a little bit of Bob Feller action here. Try to keep this game a one-run lead. Double play. Beltron is out. Still 6-5. to five. Ground out. Fly out. Error. And Joe Morgan can't keep the game going. Should we keep Bob in? I'm going to keep Bob in again. That was probably a risky decision. But one final at bat for the young rookie. The young 19-year-old, Julian German. His debut on opening day. What's the kid got? He's already two for three. Very impressive debut. And he's first pitch swing, and he's going to pop that into left center field for another base hit. Three for four in the debut of the 19-year-old. The future is bright for the young man. The future is bright. But can we hold on for the W? That is another question. We are into the bottom of the ninth here. Pitching change, and this is the debut as well of Brian Wilson. We paid him in the offseason. We told him, you want to come win a, a World Series? You come to Toronto, we've already got the pieces in place. You just got to be that final puzzle piece. Cattell Marte stares at a slider, ball two. Can we get the cutter action going? 
Ooh, we can, but he fouled it off. Marte is a fighting champion. Here comes the slider right to Nomar. Great positioning by Nomar Garcia Para holding down that third base spot over George Brett. We'll see if he can continue to have a crazy season like he did last year. That's the reason why he kept that job. Called strike two on Harold Baines. We go cutter. Harley Noer. That's a grounder right to Bagwell. And that is two outs here in the bottom of the ninth. The Jays are one out away from starting year number four, one and oh. But it's the power hitting Jason Giambi. He chops that to second base and Joe Morgan will give the Jays the victory. One and oh start for the Blue Jays here in year number four in their chase for a second ring. And look at Julian. He's having the time of his life out there starting at shortstop for the boys. Now, he's not going to be starting a shortstop the entire year. I just put him at shortstop for this game so that we could see him in his debut. It's going to go back. The shortstop position is going to go back to um, the original holder of that spot, which I'm not honestly blanking on the name of who our starting shortstop actually is. Oh, it's Cal Ripken. That's right. I was blanking on who our shortstop was. Cal Ripken will get that job back. I just wanted to... Oh, and they, they gave it right back to him. Look at that. <laughs> he was going to get it back anyway. Don't worry. He was going to get it back anyway. But look at the kid. 750 with two RBIs. He's got some good pop. As an 85 uh, overall rookie, he's got some good pop to the bat. He's a good contact hitter. He's got good durability. Decent clutch. His vision and discipline are pretty good. He's a really all-around solid player. So I'm very excited for him. But let's get moving here. Game number two, Garcia Parra is in a RBI situation. I believe in the boys. We shouldn't, I shouldn't have believed because now we're down and lost that game. Jose Fernandez is in a tough situation and we win the game though. Good job, Jose. But now Nomar is in a tough situation and he couldn't get the job done. Vidal Blue, or Vida Blue, not Vidal. Vida Blue, fractured wrist. That's not good. He's out for a while, one or two months. And we are on a interesting little run here three and four to start the season not the greatest of starts i could ask for how's the pitching doing johan's one and one randy jose so bob and pedro bob got killed in his first game that must have been against the dodgers was it oh no that was the final game of the a's series okay interesting we're getting shelled to start the season we got Mike Pizza, Mike Piazza, bases loaded. I'm going to jump in here. Bases loaded against Alec Manoa. He's washed. Bases loaded. I believe in the pizza. Here comes Mike Piazza with the bases loaded at home wearing the City Connect uniforms. The vibes are all the way up. And I'm first pitch swinging on a bad fastball inside. He's trying to jam me. Jam. And it almost worked. It almost worked. Luckily, I got enough of it to send it out of bounds. And that is a nasty little slider. It was slow enough where it fooled me into thinking it was going to stay high in the zone. And it didn't. It curved very low. But I'm not swinging at that. You're not getting me on that fastball. Out of all three, that's probably the easiest one to take, to be honest. But hey, it is what it is. It's a 1-2 count. And I'm swinging at that one. And that's going to be a RBI single. And the bases will stay loaded. We'll just circulate. I could have scored two. Could have scored two right there. But Piazza delivers. And now, here comes Bryce. I've had a good reputation with Bryce Harper in this series. A lot of the time I've come up to hit with him, I've had good success. And it continues right there. It was almost like it was on cue. Santa Maria. Bryce Harper with a grand salami. The salami was put on the table. And it was taken. Bryce Harper with the Grand Slam, his first home run of the season, and he puts the Blue Jays up 5 nothing here in the bottom of the 7th, I think we are in. I think we're in the bottom of the 7th. I don't know what it is about Bryce Harper. His swing is just so good that I just, every time I, I, I'm up with him, I feel like I can hit a home run. I don't. It's not like that with really anybody else. Like anybody else that I have on my team, I don't really feel that same way. I feel like... Oh, we scored seven runs in that inning. We scored two more after I jumped out. But, like, every anybody else on my team, I just I don't feel as confident. Like, anytime I'm up with Bryce Harper, I feel like I can, I can hit a home run. It's just weird. Like, I don't feel that way with, with really anybody else. There's there's maybe a couple players here and there, but with Bryce, it's just 
if I got him on the at the plate, I, I can feel like I can take a yard. And most of the time, I actually do. 8 nothing, huge win for Jose. And we go to 4-4. Four and four. We need to sweep the, the Red Sox here. Bob's got a shutout going. He achieves it. Good job, Bob. And now it's our first day for scouting assignments. How do we want to tackle this here? Because obviously we're not going to have the greatest draft pick. We were in the ALDS, obviously. So we're going to be picking number 26 this year in the first round. So obviously we're not going to be picking anybody this high. But we could start around, maybe around here. I'd be... I'd be okay starting to scout around this area right here. So maybe we start with this second baseman, Emerson Irizarry. Uh, Iri 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 I don't know. We're not going to draft him. I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> That's just too much of a headache. Uh, the center fielder, maybe he falls. I'll put him on the board. I also want to know if he's good. And then we'll scroll just a little bit further. And we'll try to find another young stud. Maybe like a little bit of Buster Clay. Buster Screen! We do sweep the Red Sox. Perfect. Now we go to Philadelphia to play the Phillies. It's 2-2. Mario and Rivera in a tough situation. We can't get it done. Randy Johnson in a shutout. And he achieves the shutout. Good job, Randy. And now Mario and Rivera again in a tough situation. Beltron's injured for a couple days, but we lose again. Mariano might not have it this year. It might be the end of the line for Mr. Rivera. And that usually does happen. I've noticed that in Legends series I've done in the past. That Mario and Rivera usually is only good for a couple of seasons then he starts to really fall off and then you have to move on from him. and i think we've already started to see that with the save numbers the past two years so we'll go to the deadline this year and we'll we'll evaluate then how good rivera's been doing we'll have to see beltron's back healthy another scouting assignment day we currently are tied with the red sox for the division it's early on though and we are still looking for our scouts so we'll still scout those players bryce harper with a shin contusion okay we lose the game to the royals couldn't sweep them ripkin's got a 10 game hitting streak satchel page injury we're getting a lot of injuries this year haven't really been big on the injuries this uh this series really we haven't had that many injuries we we sweep the red sox but actually huge because they were right there with us for the division early on but now we've created a two game lead and joe morgan's at the plate tied in the bottom of the ninth you know i gotta try to walk this off of course it's it's set up perfectly for me i gotta try to walk this off joe morgan with one out bottom of the ninth and a runner on second and first trying to walk off the game against the orioles in a bad jersey clash i don't think i'm gonna try to run this because what if he throws the second yeah i could have had a double play right there it's a bad jersey clash we're both wearing black uniforms I don't know what they're doing here. Cal Ripken's at the plate. Two outs, bottom nine. If we don't get this, we go to extras. I'm sure the fans wouldn't mind a little free baseball, but I want to go home. And I'm going home. Cal Ripken, if it stays fair, it's a walk-off. No. Oh, my God. I thought I did it. I thought I pulled out the unthinkable. Although that could be the walk-off we needed, and it will be. Rounding third and coming home, Blue Jays win. Ripken does it in the end. We thought we had it with the home run. It just went foul, but then the very next pitch, Ripken rips it, no pun intended, into right field. And look at the boys. Look at the boys with the walk-off, getting a huge W. You love to see it. You absolutely love to see it. And Mariano got the win, so good for him. Huge W's. Huge, 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 huge W's. And we continue our dominant month of April here. Let's keep moving on. Ripken's got two home runs. So after he just walked off the previous game against the Orioles, now he comes back the next day and hits two more home runs, and we lead 12-2. to two. I don't need to jump into that. It's 12-6. to six, So they did come back and fight a little bit, but what a, what a week for Cal Ripken. So we know now 100% on Tyson Pena. We're getting close on Buster Clay, but he's already looking pretty pretty garbage. I don't even think I want to draft him. Let's take these two guys off so we will change prospects. And I probably do have to do a better job of scouting deeper into the draft because way too often we get down to like the third round or late second round and I already don't have a good idea of who I want to draft. 
Like, there, I already don't know anybody's overalls or anything, true overalls, because we haven't scouted that deep. So, I do have to do a better job of that. But we are killing the Orioles. Like, killing them. 12-6 to 6 and 11 to nothing as we sweep them. We come off a sweep of the Red Sox. It's a six-game win streak for the, the Blue Jays. This is how I expected it to be. I expected domination, pure and utter domination. Bob Gibson's got a shutout going, top of the eighth, and we do get it done. Tony Stone broke her shin. She's going to be out for one to two months. That's too bad. But she is a pretty low overall. We finally lose. Rangers beat us 3-1. to one. We come back and get the series 3-1 to one as well, funny enough. Uh, we beat them 10-1. to one. We are 18-8, and eight, already building a five-game lead in the division. But we are suffering a decent amount of injuries, which is not something that I would like. We've got some pretty big injuries. I mean, Piazza will be back very soon it's not that big of a deal but we did lose vita blue and he's still out for about a half a half a month so or a month i should say so he is he's gonna be a little bit shaky woosa go is playing okay george brett's in the game it's one to one let's try to get this one all right here in st louis george brett at the plate runners on first and second top of the eighth can we get an rbi to take the lead that's the goal we'll see what happens not good there. Not good there. That's going to be a 1-0 count. Come on, George. Oh, that was a good pitch. That was that was a pitch to hit. I was a little bit early on it, a little bit too antsy. I didn't want to wait for it. I really got a piece of it. That could have really been the, the pitch to do it. And that might be a double play unless George Brett can beat the throw and he can't do it. Double play ends the inning in an unfortunate way. Do we get the win? Mariano is at the plate, or at the mound, I should say. Did they walk us off? No, we held on for the win. Joe Morgan hit a two-run homer in the top of the 10th. Good for Joe, and Mariano gets another win. I feel like he's just getting lucky with these wins. He's kind of just in the right place, right time kind of situation for him. But a huge W. Piazza's back. I figured he would be. Goose Gossage in a very tough situation. And we hold on for the victory. We are dominating right now. 20-8 and eight in April. We got this guy fully scouted. So we will change him. And we will keep on looking for those studs. Who's going to be a stud? Maybe this guy, Jeb. If your name's Jeb, you're probably not going to be that great of a baseball player. But you never know. Tony Gwynn bruised his leg, but it should be back in a couple days. Some big wins. Larry Walker at the plate. Raleigh Fingers has got a tough situation. Should we jump in with Raleigh? We haven't really jumped in any pitching situation. Let's do it. Against the Yankees in the Bronx, let's do it. Goose Gossage. Not Goose Gossage. Raleigh Fingers on the mound here. Bottom eight. Two outs. Larry Walker at the plate. And we'll see if good old Raleigh can finger this baseball right into the strike zone. And that's going to be an 0-2 count. How do we strike him out? Maybe a fork ball? He's not ready for the fork ball. There's no way. He wasn't ready for the fork ball, and Raleigh Fingers keeps it a 3-2 game. Raleigh's hyped. Good job, Raleigh. Can we win the game, though? Yes, we do. Another victory for the good guys. Another victory for the good guys. Johan goes seven innings. Kikuchi lost the game. Big W's all around. Big old W's. Can we sweep the Yankees out? Ripken's at the plate with a 12-game hitting strike. It's 4 nothing. We win 5 to nothing in the end. Tony Gwynn's back healthy. And Ripken again with his 13-game hitting streak. But this time we're down 5-2 to two because Jim Abbott is the monster of all monsters, apparently. And he beats us. But he's only 4-3 and three this year. He's not having as good of a year as he did last year. And the final game of the month is against the Minnesota Twins. And we won that game. We are 25-9. 25-9. and nine. I was a little bit worried... When we started the season so shaky, I mean, look at this, how we started. I think it was like 4-3 and three or 3-4, three and four, something like that, whatever it was. We started very shaky, but then we dominated the month of April. Very happy to see it. How are the early awards looking? We got nobody right now in the MVP race, but we do have a couple Cy Young candidates right now. Still early on, obviously. Batting title, nobody. Reliever of the year, nobody so far. Rookie of the year, uh, I would expect, I would expect the, the big man to get in there. I don't know how much he's played. He's played in three games. He had 12 at-bats. He's got three hits, which are all three of the ones that I had. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> he hasn't done anything in the 12 at-bats or the, I guess, 
the other, how many at-bats would that be? The other nine at-bats that he's had? Whatever it is. He hasn't done anything else. That's kind of unfortunate. But hey, he's young. And he's already grown up to an 86. So he's, he's going to be a killer. He is going to be a killer. So happy we have him on the team. Why is Carlos Beltran not playing in center field? Because he's regressing and sucking this year? How is uh, Joe DiMaggio doing? I mean, DiMaggio's not hitting much better. Get Beltran back in there. I hate when they change my lineups like that. All right, we will finish. You know what? We'll get through the, the series against the Twins, and then we'll get through this series against the A's again, and then we'll end the episode there. So we lose the game against the Twins. We got some scouting to do. We got James Yee finished up, so we will find a new guy for replacing him. And that new guy is going to be this dude right here, Henry Rodriguez. And we'll keep Billy Shelley and Jeb Hillman. And keep scouting. All right. We do take the series against the Twins. Beat the A's there. Beat the A's there. And Bob Gibson in a 2-0 situation. I've been avoiding Bob, but let's let's get in, let's get in and, and help Bob get a shutout. Or at least pitch this inning. Bob is kind of in a little bit of a pickle here. It's 2-0. He's got one out here in the top of the eighth. We started against the A's. We'll finish against the A's. But he's I'm pitching around Troy Gloss. I'm not really trying to. The, the pitches just aren't going exactly where they need to go. That's a much better location right there. Gets it back in the right track. 2-1. Here comes a slider. And he chases after it. Good job. Exactly what I was looking for. And then we'll go with a little bit of a changeup maybe. Just see if we can get him swinging and missing. I'd love a double play though. He doesn't chase the, the changeup, so maybe a sinker will get a ground ball going. He doesn't chase it. The discipline from Troy Gloss is crazy. And they bring in a pinch runner with the bases loaded. Oh, I can't believe he, he did not swing at that. The discipline's out of control from Troy. But Harold Baines is a different story. He might want to swing and miss at everything. At least that's the hope. The slider got him swinging. Strike three, two outs in the inning. And now it's Jeta, the captain. Former New York Met, super, not Super Bowl, playing two inch Madden, World Series champion from back in MLB The Show 23. Let's see what we can do, get done here. 0 2 count, sinker, he doesn't chase it. That's a good eye from the captain. But can he go back to back on the slider? It's enticing, and he gets him! Jeter swings and misses past the slider, and Bob Gibson gets out of danger. That's massive. That is massive. And they want me to go top of the ninth, so they want to get me the, the shutout here. Anthony Santander puts that ball in, in the air, but it's into foul territory. It is an 0-1 count. Top of the ninth. Here comes Gibby. The sinker fouled off as well. I think we go slider here. That's the only logical choice. Here's the windup. The delivery. And the ball, okay. Good eye, good eye. We'll go curveball. Haven't thrown that at all since jumping in with Gibson. And that's why, okay. Poor, poorly accurate, poor decision making. 2-2 two, two count, here comes the sinker. Ooh, horrible location. He just lost that ball completely. What about the stinky cheese? Does he handle the stinkiest of cheeses? He does into uh, right field, but gonna be caught by the second baseman, Joe Morgan. And that'll be the first out. I know Bob's tired. His energy is pretty low. It's in the, to the orange now. But he's got two outs and a shutout on the horizon. A grounder. First base. Stepping on the bag is Bagwell. And that's the second out. And it's, now it's Blake Sable. He's the final hope for the A's. There's the first pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. We'll go slider action here. See what we can get. Ooh, just outside the plate for ball one. Maybe a little changeup. Haven't thrown that in a while. Get, get him on the changeup. Yes, we can. Swing and a miss, strike two. Do we get him on the sinker or do we go back to the slider? I'm going to go back to the slider. If it goes for a ball, I'll hit him with a sinker next. It's a foul or it's a grounder to shortstop. Ripken on to first and the Jays win. Another big victory. In the saga that is the season four Toronto Blue Jays. Ten strikeouts for the big dog, Bob Gibson. 
beating the Beavs. Gets another shutout. He's got to be leading the league at shutouts at this point. And that is where we will end this episode. Season 4 started a little shaky. I was a little bit worried when we started out the season like 3-4. and four, But then we really turned around. We swept the Red Sox twice in the month of April. We swept we swept the uh, the Orioles. We took 2-3 or three against the Rangers. We swept the Cardinals. Took 3-4 or four against the Yankees. So, I mean, we were getting some good wins. And we were doing really, really well. Our pitching rotation has really turned it around. Johan's done really good. I mean, Randy Johnson's killing it. We took a look at him. He was in Cy Young contention. Jose Fernandez always dominates. Bob Gibson's really turned it around after getting shelled his first couple starts. And then Pedro's really the only one that's that's kind of shaky this deep into the, the month. Uh, but last year he was also a little bit shaky, but we chose to stuck, stick with him and he, he turned it around. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that this year. Obviously, we still got a couple episodes before the trade deadline, so we'll see... Uh, there's still a lot of baseball left to go for him to turn this around. Or if he just stays the same, then we'll have to readjust and uh, reevaluate his situation here on the team. Same kind of thing with Mario Rivera. Now, he has cooled off, or he has uh, not cooled off. He's heating up a little bit in terms of his ERA, his whip, and his war. Started a little shaky, but he's turned it around, so that's good to see. Feller's a little bit rough right now, but it's because Vita Blue's been injured, so a lot of the stress has been put on him as that uh, long relief guy. And then in the lineup, we got Beltron, who's really struggling, but so is DiMaggio, so it's not like I can not I can switch him. The top of our order is really hitting the baseball. Really hitting the baseball. But then once it goes to Beltron, we're really kind of just doing nothing. Hmm. Interesting. One through five is crushing the baseball, and then... Six through nine, I mean, Piazza's got 281, Harper's got 292, Garcia Parra is cold and kind of bad right now. Maybe it is time to switch to George Brett, see what he's got. German is still hasn't played much. Maybe we, sh we give the kid a shot. I mean, he can play second base and third base, but Joe Morgan and uh, Cal Ripken are both dominating. I just switched out George Brett, so he's not taking his spot. I don't know. I like the way the team looks. I mean, we're winning games, so obviously nothing is going too bad. But I don't know. It's weird. It's really, really weird. But that's going to be where we end this episode. Next episode, we will finish up May and jump a little bit into June. Maybe even all of June. Who knows? We'll figure it out. But that is going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Thank you so much. Stop by and watch. I truly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.